The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at this! He's got it! Ready for a spare! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Hawaii Camp Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Looks good. That's good to go. It's a blue. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to another Sunday noon edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes here on the Winds of New England, and welcome to Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. I'm Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. This is week two of our current series. Dave Richards with the big win last week, almost a 400 triple, and now he gets to come back and try and make it two in a row today. That's right. He'd much rather have the 400 this week because he might <laughs> need all of that with against Gary Carrington, but it should be a great matchup. Good friends, good bowlers, and uh, I'm looking forward to a big match. All right, let's get a slow-motion look at both of our bowlers for today's match. First of all, our returning champion going for his second win in a row from Plastow, New Hampshire, Dave Richards. Listen to these averages. Average for Dave is a 130. His high single is 196. His roll-off score was 674. And he was right about on target with that average, just a little bit higher last week with a, four, a 396 to knock off uh, Dan Mitchell in the first match of this sequence. So now he gets a chance to uh, participate in the Plastow Championship match. Also from Plastow, New Hampshire, our number three seed, Gary Carrington. Okay, and Gary averages 133. His high single, 195. His roll-off score, 686. They're already joking. They're saying the winner's got to leave town after this match. <laughs> as the winner, of course, will move on to the semifinals. There's money at stake, bonus money, of course, as well, from Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. And we have to tell you about our bonus ball contest, too. We'll get to all of that and start this match. Should be a good one. Dave Richards and Gary Carrington, they'll get it started right after these words. Don't go away. Last week, if you missed it, our number four seed, Dave Richards, knocking off number five seed, Dan Mitchell, as Dave threw that 396, so he moves up the sequence now. Number three seed, Gary Carrington, the opposition this week. The winner of this match faces John Plant next Sunday. And two weeks from today, it'll be our series championship match with number one seed, Paul Berger, against whoever survives these next two matches. This should be a dandy. You want to strap yourself in for this one. This, this could be fun. Sure. Dave Richards to start it. And oh. he starts with a strike. Well, he threw six of them a week ago against Dan Mitchell. This was actually a full hit here and gets a break. I thought he'd get a break with a 4-7 left, and they both went. Oh, and, and a, a double, double strike. Wow. Well, we told you it might be pretty good. <laughs> well, he got away with that full hit on the first strike, but that next one was no fluke. That was right in the pocket. Double strike sets him up for $250 in bonus money if he can throw another one when he... Comes back up. But here's Gary Carrington trying to weather this storm. Well, Gary can throw strikes too. There's no doubt about that. These two guys, uh, two of the best in the business. And there's the spare for Gary to start. Gary's last appearance in singles here on Stars and Strikes was almost a year ago to the day. November of 93. He had beaten Mark Gallant his first week and then threw a 372, but that was not enough against Chuck Langlois. And look at uh, Gary's expression. Does it look like he just had a double strike throw against him? You'd never know it. <laughs> the two and the seven, and he'll have two in a row, and he yes. does. Just got enough of it to kick out the seven pin. So, an explosive start here. Now for $250 in bonus money for the triple strike. Dave Richards. Well, it's no. pretty good, but that ball it breaks sharply from right to left. And when he hits light in the one-two pocket, that ball goes right to the left side wall. And you can see what he ended him ended up with, the four, seven, and ten. Try to catch that wood. No. Thought he might have taken that piece of wood out of the channel and try that, but. But it's a terrific start. After three boxes, Dave Richards already at 56. Oh, 
This is the lane, lane 31, where he threw five of his six strikes a week ago. And a spare in the fourth. Gary on a spare looking for bonus money and it'll have to be a spectacular one. Just five on the fill. Let's see. Oof. <laughs> Pretty good effort. And nine. So the difference, 14 for Dave Richards after three. He had an opportunity to really blow open a big lead with that double strike early, but Gary answered with the two spares to keep it close. Well, this may set up pretty well. One, two, four, six, ten, but a piece of wood behind the one and the two, which should help. Got too much of the head pin and not enough of the one two pocket. Leaves himself the 6 10, and Dave Richards can add to his lead when he gets up on that spare. Nine for Gary. $30 in our bonus ball contest at the end of the show. And don't forget our bonus money for the bowlers this season provided by our good friend Emmett Horgan and the folks at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire, right on Main Street, Route 97. Come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, the eight fill and another spare for Dave Richards. Another chance for bonus money. That bonus money, $25 for three marks in a row, $25 for each additional consecutive mark, $250 for three strikes in a row, $250 for each additional consecutive strike. For the spare, no. So twice he was flirting with bonus money, but not to be. I have a feeling Emmett will be dipping into the checkbook uh, before this hour is over, though. <laughs> 98 already through six frames for Dave Richards. I don't see this hour going by without bonus money being won. Oh, Gary is right through the center again. He almost did that the last time on lane 32. He managed to kick out the 10 pin, this time the full spread eagle. And the eight. And 59, and a 30 pin advantage now for Dave Richards early in the match. Gary moves over to lane 31 here at Park Place. Nice pocket hit and leaving the eight pin somehow. Well, he's been all over the head pin. Just a matter of time before he gets off it just a little and starts hitting one of the pockets. That time the one three and leaves just the eight pin. For the spare? Yes, right on the cap. Drove it straight through. Three marks for Gary. Full on the head oh. pin, but wow. Hang he on. Almost carried it. He's getting a lot of action off that head pin. That was flush, as you said, again, Doug, and almost came up with a strike. Well, he didn't get the strike, but he did get a great break kicking out those other two pins, and that set him up for the easy spare. His fifth mark. Now to his favorite lane, 31. Oh, he missed the head pin. That's a rare miss over there for Dave. Just a four fill on the spare. Give it right a try! Back. Give it oh, a try! Yes. yes, sir! Great shot. The four horsemen on the left plus the 610. It's worth another look. Looked like he had the head pin kicked over there into the middle of the 610 to take him out for the spare. That's a great shot. 
Gary Carrington on the spare, and there's the third consecutive time on lane 32 that Gary has punched right through the center. Two spread eagles and then one eagle, one almost a spread eagle, just minus the 10 pin, and now he takes out the three. Seven box, and Dave Richards is piling up a, another big lead for himself in the first game like he did last week. Gary Carrington does his bowling at the Exeter Lanes and also at the Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. And again, a spread eagle. Wow. Well, Gary's not one to panic. When you're hitting the head pin, that's half the battle. It's a matter of time, and hopefully he's going to find the pocket. And if he does, look out, because he's not that far off. Wow. Just a six box. So an opportunity for Dave to add further to the lead here. He's got six marks already in the first eight boxes and another opportunity for bonus money here. And this time he'll get it with the strike. $25 in bonus money for Dave Richards. And he's got himself a big game working here. You see that ball breaking from right to left and real a lot of mixing action. Now looking for another one. Oh, there goes the seven pin and watch out. <laughs> this for another $25 and I take my chance with this one. <laughs> How do you play this one, Dad? Uh, it's probably the wood. <laughs> <laughs> there it is for 25 more. 162 plus a ball. This has been the biggest game in a quite a few weeks for us. By far the biggest game this season. Another one in the pocket. Oh, look oh, at this. Almost another 25. A nine fill and a 171 opening game for Dave Richards. How about that? Previous high game this year had been Jack Quinn a few weeks ago with a 156 and Gary Carrington. Happy to see anything but the spread eagle. Oh my. That's what he doesn't want to start happening is getting the spare opportunities and not making them. said, Dan, Gary's been around long enough and he knows that still two games to go and plenty of time to catch up. We've seen comebacks of this magnitude before. And, and he's thrown a few 170 games in his uh, yeah. <laughs> career, so he knows he can do it. And, and it's, is, as you said earlier, it's not like he's missing badly to the right or left. He's been on the head pin consistently. He just hasn't been getting the break so far. 106, a very hard 106 for Gary Carrington. 171 for Dave Richards, the big early lead. Two games to go here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back. Gary Carrington with a 65 pin hill to climb, but there is his first break after being full on the head pin again. This time he blows out eight and has an opportunity for a spare. Four seven. Oh, he dropped that ball, <clears throat> pulled it to the left. Opportunity missed. That's what he wanted. Gary, as much as anybody, too, has been uh, talked about this before. He's been victimized by big scores against him here on Stars and Strikes, and it looks like uh, there's at least a chance for that to happen again if Dave Richards keeps cooking the way he has been. Well, that might not have been a good thing, that six pin going over. Leaves him with the seven, eight, nine. It looks like he's gonna have to go after the nine pin and catch some of that wood. Could play the one out front. Right after the nine pin. Oh, got it. Nice shot. That's mark number four for Gary Carrington. 
And now Dave Richards coming off that 171. Little full, but he gets away with it. Yeah, still tripping out that extra pin, and that's when you throw the 170s. Looked like he was going to be left with a 3-4-6 and tripped the 4-pin out of there, but that time just the 3-pin. I think that might be the first shot he's missed today. It's a 10 box. He only had two open frames in the first game. And another big ball on lane 31, dropping a solid nine, leaving the six pin. This is the pin he just picked up for the 10 box. Now he's gonna shoot at it for a spare, trying to match Gary's spare in the second. Just got it. Thought he might have turned that one over a little bit too much at first. Identical scoreboard. Both bolos this time, spare, uh, 10 boxes in the first frame, spare up in the second. Now Gary Carrington and the fill. This is the lane he's got to figure out, lane 32, and he got off to the side a little bit that time, gets his seven fill, triangle leave. And the spare, two in a row for Gary. And a shot at bonus money now. I think that's the way he's got to approach it right now. I says, let's see if I get myself some bonus money, and I think that in itself will help him on his score. Off the head pin this time. Four horsemen right. Not, Not enough. I think you're right, Dan. I think it adds an extra element in it because even if you fall far behind, you can always look at it as, well, I can put some marks together and make some money, and then next thing you know, if you put enough marks together, you might get back in it. That's right. Dave Richards spinning a pin across. It doesn't hit anything. That wood may help him out, though, on the 5-7. It's also an eight fill on the spare. Dave doesn't waste a lot of time and he fires it for spare number two in a row. It's remarkable, the 171, he only had $25 worth of bonus money. He had other chances, uh, actually $50, that's right, four in a row or less. And he's got himself another chance, a difficult spare though with the wood out in front like that. Got oh, it. he got it off the wall. Three in a row, $25 more, and that will take us to a break. Dave Richards, after a 171 opening game, now has three marks in a row here in game two as he has added to his lead. And we'll be back with more in a minute. Gary Carrington. With that very short three-step approach. Yes, can't get that extra pin. Yeah, that's seven pin to clear out of there for him. Six, seven, ten. Hoping that that wood might come out a little bit farther. I don't know if it's out far enough to help him. No, it's too deep. Oh. Wow. Pretty good effort there without the wood, though. And the 10. Gary and his wife Kathleen have two sons. Matthew, who's 11, and Michael, who's 6. Do you realize Matthew was just born when we began this program? <laughs> Seems like only yesterday. <laughs> Gary works at AT&T in North Andover. And here, another split, but as that wood turns around, perhaps an opportunity here. Possibilities. On the cap and not enough to carry the seven pin. Boy, he's been so close on a number of shots, but sometimes close doesn't cut it. Two ten boxes. Now, Dave Richards working on three marks in a row, filling a spare here. He already has $75 in bonus money. Off target left that time, but 
He'll have the four horsemen. What's nice about this four horseman, he has a pin, a dead piece of deadwood in between the six and the ten. Also has a little guide on the left, to the left of the head pin, oh, but boy. that's all he got. Flush on the head pin cost him, well, cost him another 25. He got picked up at $25 in bonus. That would have been 50. Instead, it's a 10 box. He does add nine more to the lead in the first half of this second game. Dave, halfway through the match at 243. That's wow. pretty good. <laughs> That's not bad at all. Well, the one, the three, and the seven. the type of shot you want to stay at the left of the head pin. Catch the head pin going away and with this ball breaking from right to left that might be ideal. I think if you split it the wood might cost you the shot. No, he's playing the wood. Oh, got it. Fine well, shot. That is mark number 12 for Dave Richards. Dave must be older than I thought. That's kind of what I would do. <laughs> play the wood like that. I thought these young guys didn't play the wood. <laughs> I have to ask Dave about that later. Look at this, on the head pin again, three, six, 10, but also the four pin, no play of a wood. It's very unusual that Gary would be this far into a match without having thrown at least one strike. Well, all I know is I had one of us announcing this match, he was up there and said, well, there's gonna be a lot of bonus money in this, this match, and where Gary hasn't had one yet. <laughs> I don't mention any names, but it wasn't me. <laughs> that looked like a pretty good-looking first ball and turned out kind of thin. He winds up with the triangle. Six, seven, eight. Oh, just sliding by the six. And the ten box. The runner-up in this match will receive a check for $175 plus whatever bonus money they've accumulated. And the winner will move on to the semifinals next week against John Plant from Manchester, New Hampshire. Six fill on the mark for Dave, looking for two in a row. Got it. Seems like every time he turns around, he's got a chance for bonus money. Well, he's rolled 17 boxes in this match, and he has 13 marks. I guess that's the reason he's shooting at bonus money all the time. <laughs> he hasn't had more than one box in a row without a mark. Oh, he's got to hurry with this one. Nope. So a rare open for Dave Richards, and it's a seven box. But he does, as you see, have the big lead. And Gary Carrington still trying to figure out the answers here. Actually, this might be one of the better leaves he's had on uh, lane 32. This may go with the wood positioned. Let's see. Oof. Can you believe that? <laughs> How many times has he thrown and after the second ball have one pin still standing? It's a nine. Let's see what happened. All around it. And the wood turns favorably for him. He should sweep everything from right to left if he gets that wood on the red line or thereabouts. So oh, he's a little high. Too high in the wood. Nine box, 110, 216 for Gary after two. And I, I said a minute ago, Dave Richards hasn't had two boxes in a row open yet in this match, but if he doesn't get this mark, he'll, he'll have two in a row open. Uh, I was going to remind you of that. <laughs> Let's see. Nope, didn't go down deep enough on the wood, I don't think. 6-10 for 10 box. 
Make it nine. 121 with a box to go, and he's going to be over 300. Yeah, oh, eight, pins, eight pins. Eight pins for 300 after two. And there they are. And it'll be a spare leave. Yes, indeed. 3 5. Plank out in front. No problem for Dave. There you go. That's mark number 14. Now, keep in mind, last week he had 15 marks in the entire match. He already has 14 today in just two games. He had eight in the first, six here in the second with a chance for one more. But instead, it'll just be a four box, a 135 and a 306 after two games for Dave Richards. He has the lead after two. Game three coming up after these words. Well, you know, we love to get mail here on Stars and Strikes, and if you'd like to uh, drop us a line, if you have a question or a comment, a criticism, whatever, perhaps you have a question about a rule that you've uh, noticed come up here on the program, drop us a line at Candlepin Stars and Strikes, WNDS TV 50, 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. Remember, this is not the same address for the contest. This is only if you have any questions or comments about bowling or about our broadcasts here on the Winds. We'd love to hear from you. We don't uh, get a chance to answer all the mail, so don't be offended if you don't get a letter in return. But uh, we do address some of the comments on the air, some of the questions that we believe are uh, of interest to, uh, to our fans. And the third game begins. <laughs> Ho-hum with another Dave Richards mark. Not a betting man, but I bet you lunch he is 400. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he doesn't... <laughs> He's going to be sorely disappointed, I think. He needs just 94 to get there. One, three, and seven left for Dave. Seven on the spare. Oh, right Ooh. around the seven pin. As Doug said earlier, John Plant from Manchester, New Hampshire, will be here next week. And in two weeks, if you missed it earlier, Paul Berger who has been in all six of our Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions events, is going to try to make it seven in a row in two weeks, as he'll be here as our number one seed. Gary Carrington. No, it's just not happening. Nope. It's again, need to have trip that four pin, give you a legitimate spare leave. Well, Gary is... Uh, able to come back, as we mentioned earlier, but I, without even checking the record book, I could tell you that this would be the biggest uh, single-game comeback that we've ever had. Probably going on Guinness's book but, <laughs> this comeback. But, of course, as we mentioned earlier, there's always the, uh, the lure of the bonus money as well here in this third game. If you put something together, and there at last is a workable spare leave on lane 32. And the spare. That's Gary's sixth mark. All of them have been spares. Dave Richards with that thin pocket hit that tends to work so well for him because he gets a great mix on the ball. I mentioned during last week's show that Dave probably would not have been happy with that score he threw last week, even though it was a 396. And in fact, he said at the end he just didn't really feel comfortable uh, after the first game. I dare say he's probably been a little bit more comfortable this week. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not getting tired because he's throwing so many marks. Let's put it this way. If this is uncomfortable... <laughs> eight, Phil, chance for another one with the wood over the deck on the 210. He's given body English here. He's leading by 98 and he's <laughs> body English up here. I think he's after him. It's money. That's what I think it is. <laughs> For all your new and used car needs, make sure you uh, go down to Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Yes. And mention the show. Absolutely. 
tell them that you heard it here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Go in and... He's been a great supporter of ours. That's right. Quite a few years now. Say hello to Emmett Horgan, the proprietor. The guy who's uh, providing bonus money this season here on Stars and Strikes. And uh, seven fill for Gary on his spare. Three, six, and ten left for Gary. Trying to make it two in a row. And has he had two? Yeah, opening boxes of the first game and then uh, second and third of the second game. But they've been few and far between. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> that's got to go. Come on. <laughs> They're fighting to stand up for him. Watch the ten pin. Get down. Chance for bonus money for Gary now. Just missing the head pin, but that may be the key for him right now. The head pin wasn't doing him much good. <laughs> Eight fill, chance at another, chance at bonus money. Yes. And he's got it. Breaks into the vault for $25 bonus money, his first bonus money of the day. Three marks in a row for Gary Carrington. More on Stars and Strikes in a minute. Dave Richards with the big lead, looking for his second win in a row. And almost the strike. Dave has featured the spares this week. He threw six strikes a week ago, but today he has just three. But that was his 14th spare. Full on the head pin, gets away with it. Still kicks out the 6-10 and leaves himself three pins with a piece of wood out in front. Yep. It's off to a great total. Already at 386 plus a ball in the sixth frame of the third game. Well, Gary Carrington got himself 25 all. Let's see if he can continue. Well, he's gonna have to make the four horsemen. Oh. oh, my, my, my. Ten box. Oh. And a big strike. First one of the day for Gary Carrington. Too bad because he hit that four horseman and left the 10 pin and, and he comes back with a picture perfect strike. Dave Richards, chance for bonus money, two in a row. And Ooh. he'll have a chance, the 4 7. In uh, almost 11 years, only four men. Oh. Oh, there's $25 more for Dave Richards. As I started to say, in almost 11 years, only four bowlers have had as many as 20 marks in a match. Dave Richards has 19 right now. The record is 23 by Rick Farwell. It was back in 1984. <laughs> they were falling easier back then. <laughs> <laughs> for all of us. It's right. Ten years ago. <laughs> We could certainly see him better. <laughs> if you're wondering what the high triple is all time, it's Peter Flynn's 482, and Dave is uh, not going to be able to reach that unless he... Well, even if he does strike out, he's not going to be able to reach that. But he's going to have one fine total. There's no question about it. 
Gary Carrington still with room for bo bonus money. Working on a strike. And the opportunity for a spare here on the 3-5. Got it. Well, I hate to talk about the ifs, could'ves, and what ifs, but boy, in that fifth frame, he hit that four horseman, left yep. the 10 pin, he would have had a string of six marks in a row. Chance for more bonus here. Back on the head pin and dropping nine. Isn't it always the way you come down to the end of the match and all of a sudden everything goes? Except for that one seven pin, of course. There's $25 more for Gary, and he'll come up with uh, a chance for more when he comes back for his final two. Dave Richards, last two boxes of the match. This uh, is a pretty fair bet for his 20th mark. 20 marks in the match for Dave Richards. And he's got room for bonus money too, if he were to throw a strike here. Six fill. Oh, not quite on the 10 pin. But what a match for Dave Richards. Takes a glance over to the big scoreboard here, finishes it off with a 10, a 138, and a 444. And he gets congratulations from Gary Carrington, who will now try and uh, add to his paycheck here. He's got $50 in bonus money in this game, and as Dan mentioned, he could have had more if not for that frustrating seven pin. Well, let's see. That'll be a nine drop. $25 more if he knocks this one over. And he's got it. And like Dave did, there's still room for two more if he were to throw a strike here. Four fill this time for Gary. Oh, yes, $25 more. What a great shot. And that was worth at least 25. That was a terrific shot. Playing it inside, got it cleanly. Well, that's $100 in bonus money for each bowler now. And the final shot of the day is a five fill, a 156 for Gary Carrington, but it comes a little bit too late as Dave Richards got off to the big early start. Gary finishes with a 372. Dave Richards with the 444 for his second straight win. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers and see if we can have a win in our bonus ball contest too, right after these messages. Well, way back at the beginning of the hour, Dan Murphy said uh, Dave Richards might want to have that 400 today because he might need it. As it turned out, uh, he did need it. Gary, came, Gary Carrington came up with the big game in the third, but Dave again piled up the lead early. Well, you know, we think of the last, <clears throat> excuse me, the last game that, that uh, Gary had. Think of the first two, and he just couldn't get that extra pin to go. He was all over the head pin. Uh, they had two or three spread eagles in a row. Um, a couple breaks there, and this match might have been a lot closer. Dave Richards again, though, that smooth delivery, he just seems very comfortable here. Of course, that would be expected. He does bowl here at Park Place Lanes a lot as one of his home lanes, and 396 last week and now a 444 today. Uh, don't think John Plant and Paul Berger haven't been paying attention to that, too. Uh, so, they're probably hoping there's so many, so many to a customer, and Dave's, <laughs> Dave's used his up, but I don't know. He's, 
uh, he gets it a lead and he just doesn't look back. All right, let's talk to both of our bowlers. First of all, a round of applause for Gary Carrington, who will uh, take home our consolation check of $175. But uh, the good news for Gary is he also managed to pile up 100 extra dollars of bonus money in that third game, which uh, has to make you feel a little bit better. But, uh, well, you certainly know what what Dave's capable of, having watched him for a long time, and uh, and he, he did it in that first game. Uh, yeah, I mean, he started out right, o right away with a double strike, didn't let up from there, kept throwing a mark at least every time he got up. And I knew he was going to be tough. He bowls good at this place. So <laughs> my ball it took me a couple of strings to get it working. I should come down and practice a little bit more. Well, uh, certainly no practice needed to hit the head pin. That was not the problem. It seemed like uh, maybe too good on the head pin. Oh, yeah, you, can, you hit the head pin, and you got to have the mix to go with it. That's, that's what knocks the pins down. So. Well, Dave had the mix going. There's no question about that. Uh -huh. But uh, $175 for you plus the extra 100 so uh, not a bad payday for you, and uh, we'll hope to see you back real soon, Gary. Okay, I'll, right. I'll be back. I'll All be right. Back. <laughs> I'm sure of that. Congratulations. Thanks to Gary Carrington. And now Dave Richards for our bonus ball contest. $30 on the line today, and, uh, well, we, we've we gone into another drought, haven't we? We didn't have a win last week. That's right. It's been a couple weeks, I feel. i got a good feeling, though, today. All right, let's see what happens here with Dave. This is his strike lane, you know. Up. Oh, he didn't get a strike that time, though. It's just four. Well, Dave, Dave obviously is saving it for next week's match, apparently. Why did I do it? <laughs> Virginia Jones... Uh, just had this wild idea that Dave was going to throw an eight, but uh, it's not a match, obviously. So, Virginia from Exeter, New Hampshire, thanks for uh, playing the bonus ball contest. We'll be sending you a consolation gift, and uh, that means we'll be up to $40 next week. Well, I'm, I'm sure you knew that you probably had to have a good score, and so when you throw a 171 early, it's it's got to make you feel pretty good. Yeah, I felt a little bit comfortable. I just caught Babe on a bad day. You know, he uh, it's, doesn't happen too often for him, so I'm fortunate that way. Well, you know, last week you talked about the fact that uh, you weren't particularly comfortable the last two games. Did you did you change something this time? Actually, I did. I moved up about a half a step. I, hmm. you know, I was right at the dot, and I just moved up a half a step and felt a little bit more control. So, how does that? Uh, how do you think that changed the way you're? Does that ch also change your delivery a little bit, or well, change the flight timing, of the ball? My yep. timing was better then. You know, I was dropping the ball the first match, and this match. Uh, I had it. Kind of like golf, isn't it? If something uh, isn't quite right, you just try and figure out what to do to change it, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I just hope I can remember it next week. That's uh, all. Well, next week we have John Plant coming in. So congratulations, another big score for you. Also another uh, $100 in bonus money. You'll be trying for three in a row next week. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Dave Richards with two in a row. And uh, let's uh, spin you over to our ladder so you'll get another look at uh, who's coming in next week. Dave Richards, our number four seed, two wins in a row. And he'll take a crack at uh, our number two seed now, John Plant from Manchester, New Hampshire. What, what did he say? He moved up a little? I could write these things down. And, you know, we moved up about a half a step, he said. Uh, he shouldn't give away the trade secrets, you know. <laughs> and John Plant's going to use that next week. <laughs> uh, it should be a good match, though. John uh, is no stranger to the lanes. And uh, if Dave continues the bowl, he is. He's the one to knock off. Once again, a reminder, next weekend, Saturday at noon for Candlepin Skins from the Londonary Bowling Center. Sunday at noon, back here at Park Place Lanes. It'll be semifinal week next Sunday. Dave Richards goes for his third win in a row. John Plant will be his opponent. Until next weekend, then, for Dan Murphy and the whole Winds of New England crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody.